welcome back to episode 18 where I'm going to construct my rudder pedals and get started on the push-pull tubes for the control sticks. Uh, first, my disclaimer, none of my videos are instructional videos. I'm a first-time builder and some of my content might have interest to other people. Um, I also want to talk about an enhancement that Rand's put out. It's called the rudder return assembly. My understanding is that it's now included in the current kits, but with my kit and previous, uh, it is an option that you can purchase. Uh, I checked with other builders, and apparently it's a couple pulleys and cables that go forward of the, the rudder pedals, and it relieves the pressure from the cables back to the rudder horn. And they said engineering-wise, it's a good enhancement. You may not notice the, the, uh, any change in the uh, flying characteristics, but that taking the pressure off that rudder horn is actually something that's good for the, the engineering. So um, I did purchase it or ordered it. It's $160 if it wasn't included with your kit. Um, I ordered it about two weeks ago. Um, when I ordered it, they said they were waiting on the fabrication of some of the parts for it. So I've got to check in with them and see where that's at. Uh, but I am planning on installing it. And apparently I have to, to lift up my... Um, control sticks and part of the assembly goes underneath those but not too difficult to do so I am anxious to get those in um, uh, at this point in the build I'm at 659 hours to date I'll do a summary at the end of this episode to see where we're at when we complete this and with that uh, let's start working on those rudder pedals I've got the floorboard laid in there are two nut screws in the corner holding it in, and the others uh, are actually part of the rudder pedal installation. So now I'm going to start working on the rudder pedal, which starts on page 102. And the first thing they have you do is lay out the parts for the pedals. And you go through it. The nice thing is you, we're starting to grab parts from the finishing kit. So we're out of using the fuselage kit and moving into some of the finishing items, which kind of is a nice signal. Um, but we're going to start putting together the rudder pedals. The toe pedal assemblies go together fairly easily. Uh, it's just a couple parts that are uh, clicoed and then riveted. You do have to match drill these bottom two holes. Again, not that complicated. Uh, they are riveted with stainless steel rivets, so I am wet dipping. Uh, these are wet. I'll put these 14 in first and then work on the others. Again, dissimilar metals, stainless steel, aluminum, so priming them before I rivet them. And following riveting, then any type of finish you want to put on the pedal, um, you put your finish on. I uh, scuffed up, used acetone, and then applied primer to my pedals. Anytime I'm using paint, even if I use the truck bed liner, I'm finding that primer on aluminum is going to be a much better surface for holding the, the paint or the primer. I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these the color, one of the colors of my plane, the blue that I used on my tanks. A lot of the interior parts I'm going to use that blue on. So these are all primed and ready to go for the painting. Uh, while I'm waiting for my uh, pedal assembly to dry, uh, I'm going to start putting the brake pedals together here. You've got these uh, bushings that are going to go in through here. Uh, I was concerned that they were a little stiff and didn't have good spin to them and was thinking I needed to sand the inside here. You don't. This is actually, this hole here is actually going to get riveted to the pedal assembly. So this does not need to have turn to it. Then they tell you to cut up uh, this saddle material into, into one and an uh, eighth inch long segments. And then you've got these bushings. These are going to go in here. There's a hole in the top. You're going to clamp this in to drill press it at number 11 all the way through. On these bushings, I'm having to grind down the inside a little bit. And I'm also grinding off some of this uh, coating just using a Dremel grinder. And then I am putting some bearing grease. I've done this one and I've, I've clipped it. I've put a little bearing grease in there. And it seems to be working really well. The bearing grease should keep any rust from coming where I've gotten down to some bare metal. Um, doesn't say to do that, but there's no way this bushing is going on here and then allowing a swivel as is. And I've seen some other videos where they're grinding them out, so that's what I'm doing. 
I've just painted the petals after priming them the other day and then put a nice coat of paint on it. I used my handy dandy Harbor Freight $50 spray gun. Uh, I have to say I'm real happy with it. Uh, I won't paint the exterior but for parts and pieces it does a nice job. I'm using a PPG automotive paint. It's called Velocity Blue. It's Ford Velocity Blue I believe is the full full name. Uh, but it's, it's pricey, but it uh, doesn't take much to do painting, and I'll do a lot of my interior parts with this. Uh, so far, happy with it. The next step is to get these rudder pedals onto these assemblies. Uh, there's a, a swivel bolt that you put through here. There's some plastic washers. There's three washers. Then there's a cotter pin that holds it in place here. Uh, and I did have to drill out with a half inch these holes on the side of the pedals they weren't quite big enough i had to drill out with a number 11 this cotter pin hole a little bit so there's a little bit of drilling out uh, they give you a, a figure diagram to help you along there's a big stainless steel 3 16th stainless steel rivet that goes in the side uh, for that i had to change the nozzle on my rivet gun to fit that 3 16th and i think i used about 95 pounds of pressure on it it's it's a tough rivet to pull um, and then I think from here they go into the plane. Uh, the next section is an area that I'm probably going to bounce around again. I get down here to the rudder pedal assembly and it says the floorboard and boot cowl should be fit up before the install of the rudder pedals. Well, I think fit up. I've, I've fit up the boot cowl. I've ma uh, match drilled all the holes. So I think that's done. I don't think they mean installed when they say fit up. So I think I'm good to moving on, but then I come down here, I've done all of these items and I've, I've put the, the pedals together and it says install the floorboards, the rudder pedals and hydraulic master brake cylinder after skinning and painting of the fuselage. Well, I'm going to do the painting after. I've watched other videos and a lot of people are finishing their build without painting and they get the painting done afterwards. So I'm assuming that can be done successfully. Um, but it does talk about the skinning. I'm not sure why the boot cowl would have to be on to put the pedals in. So I'm going to go ahead, and I think I've seen others install the pedals and the floorboard. I'll, I'll fasten that floorboard down and get the pedals in. And then I come down in here, and it's called Final Installation, where you put the rudder on. But again, it says after painting of the fuselage. So I'm, anytime it says after painting, I'm going to skip by it and assume I'm going to build a plane and have it painted after I've built the plane. Um, it seems that's what others have done. So on to putting these rudder pedals in and attaching the floorboard. Okay, I struggled to get this bolt to catch the threads of the nut plate. And I'm pretty good at threading things and pushing down and catching the threads, but it just didn't seem long enough. The others, this one and this one caught, but again, at the end, I had trouble with that one also. And when I took this bushing out and just threaded it, I could get it threaded, but it was down lower than the edge of this bushing. It just wasn't going to catch the threads, and I did spend a while with it. So what I did is I picked up these. These are the ones that were supposed to go in. They're an inch and a quarter long. I went and picked up some inch and a halves and then some washers, and then I had, I had no problem putting the inch and a halves in and catching the threads, even though I had to put a couple washers in there, but I did catch the threads and get it snug down pretty tight. If I follow the manual to the next step, it wants me to attach the rudder and then the rudder return system. Um, I've seen some other builders and they continue to work in the forward section by installing the control stick assembly and that's on page 112 of the text and then your parts are on 10A01 and 10A02 so I'm going to follow what I've seen some other builders do and work on this front section and that's up in here uh, before I, I put the rudder on uh, let me get some of these controls in uh, the first thing to do is to get through your finishing kit which has got an awful lot of bags in it and get your parts 
Uh, for the most part, it was fairly simple, other than finding this 5 8 inch push pull tube 35 inches it ended up being in this bag and I knew it had to be three or four feet long so it's in this bag with all this other stuff that is more around the uh, uh, window trim and trim clamp so your 5 8 inch tube is in here with all these different parts in here so I finally found it and here's my supply that I pulled from my finishing kit uh, to start on this process. Okay, we're in the process of doing this push-pull tube assembly and this attaches to these tabs that are in the frame at station three. Uh, and the one thing I noticed is you've got a bunch of little spacers you've got to put in here, here, and here. And uh, none of them appear to be thick enough to receive the, the bolt you're going to put in there. So you got to carefully drill them out uh, to fit the bolt as well as the tabs. The tabs weren't able to to take those also. So you've got to hollow out those. This push-pull will go into the longer tube, but I've seen some other videos where they're putting this block in first and then the tube in second. I did cut the spacers and get them all set, but as I'm doing the installation right now, I'm just putting my little assembly together and this block and this is going to go in in here and the assembly with the pulleys on it for the cables are going to go in here so we'll get that done first here's my push pull tube you can see i've already got the the spacers on here this block actually goes in the middle of these two i'm just leaving this sitting in here for right now um, but i'll get this assembly on first the second thing is they get pressed i can't really maybe this picture is better they get pressed inside of this uh, this uh, receiver here it's almost like pressing in a bushing it didn't go very well I had to sand the outside or grind down the outside a little bit and then I pressed it in using my vise um, so these are what are they three sixteenths of an inch long each and then when you press them in it's hard to get the screw in. So you just got to work it uh, to get it inside there but that's what this assembly looks like when you get it all together uh, I've got these two push-pull assemblies attached. They say to leave this one loose enough so that it still swivels. You've got a cotter pin that's holding this whole assembly in place, so it's, it's taut but not too tight. And then the other assembly is back here. This is for the push-pull tube to go through. I have not put the cotter pins in and supported the cables yet because I want to make sure that... Uh, these don't have to get run any other way before I do that. So I'm holding off on the cotter pins under here. But other than that, those two assemblies are done. The next step is to put a rod end in the 12 inch rod and go at least 10 threads in and use Loctite blue. Okay, uh, good place to end the video here. Um, the next uh, episode will work on the control sticks. Uh, but let me kind of summarize what we've got done here. We have the uh, pedals installed. Uh, pay no attention to the lines and the cylinders. That comes a little later. I'm filming this a little after the fact. Uh, we got this push-pull tube assembly installed into the center here. This is this push-pull tube that goes back through these control blocks. I still don't have the, the spacers. Where's the other spacer? I don't have these drilled in yet. We're not gonna, I'm not going to do that until we're setting the, the distances. Um, we've attached it up here to the bottom of that control tube. We took the second push-pull tube and attached it on this end. This runs up the control sticks, but we haven't got these installed yet per this video, so that'll be coming shortly. That section of the build took me 20.4 hours, which brings my build time to date to 679 hours. That section went pretty straightforward, no complications per se. And with that, uh, we'll end the video. Thanks very much for watching. And remember, dream it and just build it.